Today we're going over DISM++. This is a great way of modifying Windows images and also live installs. Uh, a lot of people use NT Lite, which I've covered in past videos, but this is a free tool that is open source on GitHub. There's a couple things I wanna go over and let's get over on the article, start going through this program because there's so much to know. Uh, right here we have, before using, it is made by a chain, Chinese developer that might turn people off, but chances are if you're watching this video and other folks, if you're using Discord, if you're using TikTok, well, <laughs> those programs are way worse than anything this is going to do, so you're in the clear. But if you're in a, like a secure environment, you're looking for security, well, I, I don't know if I necessarily recommend this program in that instance, but for 99% of the people out there, it is good. I just wanted to mention that before we get into it. Now, let's go up to their GitHub, and you can see it is made by a Chinese developer. It's not actively made. You can see over here, last commit was like last year, or actually February of last year, and it's not exactly kept up. So uh, the last major release was back in 2021, so almost a year and a half ago. Uh, we can download it right here, just clicking the zip file, and this is the release. In our downloads folder, I'm just gonna extract this all, and we'll extract it to the DISM. You might want to put this in a more like your documents folder or somewhere you can access it easier. It just depends on you. But let's go through the actual feature set of this program because some things I would not recommend since it's not really up to date. So optimizations and those types of things. Some of the toolbox I think is a bit dated and not nothing I'd recommend. But there are aspects of this program I absolutely love. So let's open up legal information. You might actually read through this if you want. The privacy blurb was the one I was most interested in. It does collect some telemetry between uh, system version, structure, language, but it does say it does not get any user identifiable information, which is better than I can say about Discord and TikTok. <laughs> because it's not. All right, let's open this up. And we have a lot of options. Now the utilities is actually pretty feature rich and there's a lot of cool features in here. Disk cleanup is really nice. Uh, this right here can clean up like old Windows uh, leftover setup files. So really nice. Uh, download, cache, other stuff. We can actually scan this and just see, hey, is it gonna grab anything? I've recently cleaned this computer up doing a variety of different methods. So I don't imagine it finding too much. But as you see, even with me running like disk cleanup and other things, it still was able to find like half a gig in anytime you see win SXS. Man, say that three times fast. Uh, that's more your Windows assemblies, Windows update installers. So be careful of that. Uh, and the rest of this doesn't look too much. Windows events, I had quite a few of those. And web cache, nothing too crazy here. But overall, this looks to be about a gig. Let's hit cleanup. You see right there, we actually ended up cleaning up over a gig and a half. So with that done, let's move on to startup. This is really neat. This does something more than most tools. Most tools just stick with user startup and system startup. Now, obviously uh, we don't need security health sysstray. That's fine. Steam and Brave update, that's okay. Native boot, this is where it starts to add things that other tools might miss. You can see we have auto check, which is fine. That's a Windows deal. OneDrive setup. This is a new user startup. It automatically finds OneDrive setup.exe and runs a first time setup for new users. I hate OneDrive, but I know there are people who do, do like it. And I would say, if you don't want to set up automatically OneDrive on every new user account, just come in here and tick this box. It's really nice. Uh, and then your services. I don't necessarily like using the services tab that much, but you can go through here and do it. Personally though, I prefer to do it the old school route without using the services tab, which is just start run services.msc. And from services.msc, going through and checking all the, the services that you want from in here from the official Microsoft tool. But the startup tabs, the really one, that's really the hero here. The other really cool thing is this, app X's. It has users and provisioned. So if there's something in here like ClipChamp, and if I go through here, I bet there's a couple others I don't really care about, like that security health we disabled, Microsoft Notepad, Quick Assist. Yeah, that's all garbage that I don't want. I can just hit remove 
and this will go through and remove those accesses some of those apps some of them are going to be locked down by the system but it will get a good chunk of them on the user side you can actually see what's installed through the microsoft store here and some of these like if you go all willy-nilly like remove advertising that sounds like a good one to remove a lot of times it ends up breaking the microsoft store so just know if you do get crazy with this in here you will break the microsoft store and that's fine but let's uh, remove sec health again that's the one i know i can remove and we'll just remove those two apps and that should be good sometimes it will error but just don't worry about it just keep moving forward toolkit again this is something that has some ease of access but a lot of it like boot manager repair you can click it and it'll rewrite i don't recommend doing this because windows changes how it does the boot records so many times i say just use the official tools startup repair and i've even done a video about repairing and creating your own recovery partition to do boot mgr properly so i would never use this account management again let's see what that does that's fine but personally a better tool is just start run control user passwords to and this brings up the old school user accounts, which is neat. And you can hit advanced and then go advanced again. And this gives you all of the user accounts in the whole system, even disabled ones. And you can enable like a built-in administrator, those types of things, and see kind of the back end uh, a little bit better than necessarily that one. System restore. Again, most of these you just start from uh, your, your start menu. God mode, these types of things I don't recommend using, but it's here. Host editor, this is just, uh, again, in uh, System32, ETC, drivers, host is where that is. I, I like to go to it manually. Then you have like system optimizer. Again, optimizing on something that hasn't been updated in a year and a half or two years, not a smart move. So I would not recommend running this. Drivers, again, I, this is mainly for baking in drivers, kind of like NT Lite does it, just not necessarily as good. Apps and features, uh, you can uninstall and install apps here. So if you wanted to remove this app, you could do it. Uh, but let's say you could just do appwiz.cpl to access the Windows 7 version, which is my favorite way of managing apps because I can sort by like install date and be like, hey, what have I been doing? What have I been installing? And uh, just a little bit better than this way. But this way is sufficient as well. Updates is probably my favorite feature in this entire program because I actually rip out Windows Update all in my system. So if I go to System Settings and I go, okay, where's Windows Update? I'm, I'm missing Windows Update. Let me click Windows Update up here. Yeah, nothing is happening because I don't have a Windows Update service. This actually fixes it. We can actually just do a scan and it will reach out, download the database and say, hey, Windows, what updates are you missing? And this actually, you can treat it like a Windows update service. This is probably my favorite tool in here. And just like that, uh, we're actually already up to date on this particular system, but it would be really nice to install. So this is a great feature is a lot of times I'm pulling up NT Lite and I do the, almost the same thing is I just load my deployed image right here. And then once that's loaded, you can come to updates in this one. And this is the same thing that we're kind of doing in DSM++, except obviously NT Lite's a $30 tool. So what I like to do is just go latest online updates and then look to see what's available. And it already has everything. So there's nothing to install. We've already gotten all the latest updates, but if there was, it would show there and I could just say in queue or download and it'd pop in here. And then I could just install it or apply it to this image of Windows. It's a different way of updating Windows, uh, which I, you can use either method, which is pretty good. A lot of times if uh, people are modifying images, they stick most of like executables, maybe a PS1 script in the post out of box experience because you want it as soon as Windows is done doing all of its garbage, it will actually uh, run those scripts at the end. So usually you would put this in a post OOB state and you could add like, uh, you know, like my Win Toolbox kit to install Brave or whatever else you want to do. You could toss it into here and get going a little bit faster, a little bit easier if you were modifying like an install.wim file or ESD file, which comes on the Windows ISO you download from Microsoft. And that is 
DISM in a nutshell. It's a little cool tool, one that's probably going out of date and it's probably going to be gone here in a couple years because uh, no one's really maintained it unless someone picks up the fork, forks it, and then just keeps going with this project. I hope to see it revitalized and getting a little more updates, but I at least wanted to bring some attention to it because I still think it's a good tool. It's just slowly starting to lose its relevance and I still do like it for like a freeware version of doing Microsoft updates when you don't have Windows Update installed on your system. So with that, let me know your comments down in the comments. If there's something better, let me know because I really am looking for a replacement for DISM++, but right now there's just a couple things it does better than everything else. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.